again everyone and welcome back to reddit aliens i'm john and as always thank you so much for being here we have got a great topic for you today so let's get to it what's the most unsettling experience you've ever had please remember to like share have a happy thanksgiving if you're celebrating and subscribe i had recently started a new medication and unfortunately suffered its rarest side effect hallucinations I didn't know I was hallucinating. I thought everything going on around me was real. Every time I thought the rapture happened without me when I couldn't find anyone in the house as a kid. Thanks, evangelism. Hearing my father's voice calling my name just before I wake up half asleep. He passed away in February this year. It absolutely seems real, but it's bone chilling. It happens regularly. I was staying at my brother's house and decided to go skate and get him and his roommate's donuts. The road I have to go on is pretty busy and the speed limit was 50. On the way back, I see something on the sidewalk that looks like something or someone laying down. As I get closer, I realize it's a person that is laying there in a twisted way, as if they were hit by a car and thrown onto the sidewalk. They looked like they were dead because there was no movement. I couldn't go any further because it freaked me out so much. I had never seen anything like that before, so I turn away and start calling 911. When I turn around, there's a car pulled over that was trying to help, but the person was gone. I asked them what's up, and they said she got up and walked into the woods next to the road. I guess it was a homeless person, and I never heard anything about it after. But goddamn, I will never forget that walk. I didn't use that route for a good minute after that. A mental health patient who had graduated to an apartment in our neighborhood threw himself in front of a semi-truck in front of our house. It took a while to free her from the truck, and there were a lot of gawkers. Amazingly, she lived a day or so in the hospital. The very young truck driver was very upset. There was nothing that he could have done to stop her action. The first time I ever heard a fox in the woods behind the apartment I just moved into, I thought it was a woman being tortured, murdered, raped. I didn't know what the hell was happening. I called the police, they came over and stood on the balcony with me, and it started again. I think the officer already knew what the sound was, he kinda chuckled. I apologized profusely and felt stupid, but damn, that sound is disturbing. You know, I read these a lot, and I've heard foxes scream, and it does sound exactly like that, but wouldn't it be like a, a terrible, granted, uh, like little murder story on TV if a killer was killing people, but people thought it was the sound of a fox. Trigger warning, CW, self-harm. When I was in seventh grade, one of my closest childhood friends attempted suicide at school. I didn't technically witness it because I didn't see her hanging, but I was a few feet away. In sixth grade, the same thing happened, but... She had a different method in her attempt, and I think the idea of what depression does to people was new enough to me that I was left too confused to get as traumatized as a second time. Basically, it was at about 11.23 a.m., and it was lunchtime. I had to use the bathroom, but I decided to wait, because I was waiting for my friends in the hallway with my lunch. There was a table in the hallway, and I was standing near the bathroom door, but not in view of it. I hear a kind of gasping, yelping noise, and the next thing you know, I see the friends I was waiting for being escorted down the hallway by a teacher. By the way, that they were sobbing and panicking, I knew that there was something terrible going on in the bathroom. I just stood there confused, because I didn't put two and two together that someone was missing from the group, and the school went into lockdown, so the first responders could do their thing, and I was put into the cafeteria. There were rumors going on, of course. Someone had a seizure. There's a shooting. But then I heard that someone hung themselves and it hit me immediately. I'll spend the rest of my life wishing I used the bathroom and talked her out of it, or at least took her down quicker. I never saw her again. I went to my brother's wedding after I hadn't seen my mother in around two years and hadn't had a relationship in five or six. She walked up to me, put my face in her hands, gave me a smile that was meant to be a threat, and playfully slapped my face a few times between her hands. You are so pretty and that was that she walked away and i had to continue my day like i was not terrified to be near her i had a sleep paralysis experience it was just one time but it felt like an alien abduction was happening 
like there was some predatory being other than human coming into my room and doing something to me. Other than that, I've had two seizures, one where I couldn't breathe because my diaphragm was seized so I was suffocating, as well as having fallen onto the ground. Both were unsettling. I'm terrified of mimes. A few years ago, I was walking downtown with a friend and saw some mimes, large burly mimes. I decided to play it cool and just walk past them and not let on to the friend I was terrified. Just as we were passing them, they started shouting at us, mostly stuff like, hey, we're mimes, that's weird. I panicked and ran. Then they briefly chased us. Turns out the friend was also scared of mimes, so we fled in terror together. But yeah, burly shouting mimes, when your phobias become a mind F. When I was 16, I went to the dentist. He put the gas mask on, turned on the nitrous full blast, and then got called away for an emergency and forgot about me. The wall started moving like a whirlpool was inside them. I kept seeing myself in the third person, walking into the dentist's office and sitting in the chair like I was floating above my body. And then Jesus came and started judging everyone. I remember the feeling of, oh shit, the world just ended. Everyone's gonna die. And the feeling of utter terror I had. And then suddenly I was back, staring at the dentist again. My eyes had been open the whole time. He kind of laughed and said, Did you have an out-of-body experience? I just nodded and meekly replied, Yes, yes. And he laughed like I was joking. As a super straight-edge religious kid who had barely even drank caffeine at that point in my life, it messed me up. And I chased that high for a long time. Seems like a pretty intense experience for someone who really hadn't done any type of drug before. Hope you're okay, and hopefully you didn't chase too far. This isn't mine, but it is my brother's story. One night, maybe about the age of 13, our great-grandma and grandpa recently died. You wake up one day in the middle of the night. You go down some stairs to walk to the bathroom. As soon as you're near the bathroom, there's a figure at the bathroom door. It looks like our great-grandma. They stand there standing. It's hard to see them, but you can tell they're facing you. You ask them who they are, then it disappears into thin air as you blink. You don't feel the need to go to the bathroom anymore and go upstairs and try to forget about what happened. That's all I know from what he told me. You can choose to believe this story or not. I don't care. It's a long one, so TL, DR, up front. Walking in a park, saw a weird dog, then was creeped out by my date. I was on a first date with a man I'd met online. He was significantly larger than me, but I'm skilled in getting out of bad situations, so I felt comfortable. The date had been going well through the day, and we decided to go for a walk through the park. It was starting to get dark, but I felt comfortable and safe, prepared for anything. People knew where I was, we drove separately. Anyway, we start walking on this trail, and it quickly moves from an open park area to being surrounded by beautiful mature trees with a small creek to the left. The path continues on like this, with no lights or anything for about a mile, then crosses the street and meets with another major trail that runs through town. We're walking under the trees hand in hand, talking about life. Suddenly, he starts talking about some darker topics, fine by me. I'm pretty open-minded. He's discussing his history of sexual abuse from adults. I'm empathizing with him, and we're continuing along. I've let go of his hand now, used the excuse that my hands were cold, and shoved them into my pockets because his face became serious and grim. I started falling back a bit, and he picks me up by the hips and sits me down on a downed tree so we can take a break. Sounded romantic, but felt odd. I'm very tall and full-bodied for a woman. It let me know just how strong he really was. As we are sitting there talking about his history and how it messed him up, I'm listening and sharing with my advice for adapting now that he's an adult or whatever. I don't remember what was said. I heard a loud splash in the shallow creek and was slow to look because I assumed something fell into the water like a branch or pine cone or something, but I heard footsteps. Something had gotten out of the water. I turned to look and see a creature that looked like a dog but wearing the skin of a lizard with a long torso and mangy looking face. I can almost swear it tried to stand up on two legs. I was terrified at what I saw the moment I saw it. It went back in the water and vanished into the night. I had jumped up and he grabbed my wrist and pulled me harshly back toward him, telling me to sit. I was so terrified and didn't want to be near that creature. I said he may feel better if we continued walking while we talked. 
We got up and started walking again, and the conversation slowly moved into, I've been abused, so my sex drive is crazy high right now? What? I can't help myself. I'm not in control of my actions. He started pulling me and making me feel so small and insecure, trying to hold my waist or put his hand in my back pockets, hugging me from the front. He wanted constant physical contact. I finally decided enough was enough. I'm six foot tall, 220 pounds at the time. I can lift more than my own body weight if I need to. He may have had a foot and another hundred pounds on me, but it didn't matter anymore. I was alone in the dark with a monster and a demon and out of view of the public. I wasn't safe anymore and it was time to go. I told him he was making me uncomfortable. He wouldn't listen. I told him I had to go. He begged and whined. I demanded that I was leaving and started walking away. He grabbed me a few more times, but I would pull my hand away, rip myself from him, drop dead weight out of his hugs, and just keep walking. I got to my car and drove off, and fortunately he never contacted me again. And weirdly enough, that was only my second scariest date and not even my top 10 scariest night walks. Well, did you just know that this is a woman? She came banging on my door. She looks like she had the shit kicked out of her and she basically told me that her boyfriend had beaten her and was coming to kill her. So I let her into my apartment and told her to hide in the bathroom with the kitchen knife. Well, before I could get to my shotgun, the boyfriend, a real big muscle bound freak of nature, broke through the door and started beating the shit out of me and trying to kill me. Well. I don't remember much about the fight itself, but I do remember eventually I managed to get on top of the guy, and I just kept hitting him again and again and again, until he just wasn't moving anymore. Until two years ago, we lived in a haunted house. I had many, many unsettling experiences, but the absolute worst was the night my wife attempted suicide. She just lost her mind. She attacked me and then smashed a mirror, picked up a piece of glass and started slashing at her wrist. I grabbed her, we fought but I got it away from her. It took me about two hours, but I was finally able to calm her down. It was like she was possessed. Once she was asleep, I cleaned up the room and threw away all the glass. Weeks go by. Every so often, I find pieces of glass where there shouldn't be any. Like randomly on the bedside, on the dresser, it didn't make any sense. Time goes by. She starts to get better. So one night, we go out to dinner. We get home laughing and having a good time. I get ready for bed, unzip my shaving kit, and there, sitting next to my razor, is the piece of glass she used to slash her wrist with, the exact same one. I threw all of it away. There's no explanation for it. Sometimes out of boredom, I do a Google search for creepy stories on Reddit. Hi. Well, home for Thanksgiving and all, I was doing it again tonight, and came across an eight-year-old ask Reddit that was basically the same as this one. It got me thinking about whether or not I had anything creepy happen to me that would be relevant to a post like this. I realized I do actually have something pretty creepy that happened to me before. It's something that has been bothering me since it happened 14 years ago, and I'm hoping maybe Reddit could help me settle it once and for all. It's convenient that this post was created so recently. Anyway, in 2008, I was a freshman in college. Facebook was still kind of new, I guess. I had only had one at that point for two to three years. Then one day, I get a friend request from someone who looked like an average Joe who very well could be from my hometown. I was savvy enough already to be extremely suspicious of random friend requests, so before accepting, I decided to browse this person's profile to see if they were in fact someone I might know. I immediately noticed it was one of those people who just spam friend requests, but didn't seem like an overt scam profile because it did have some normal seeming posts on the profile feed. Posts like, just got my new truck, with the picture of his truck, and moving to my new place in my hometown. Then I noticed the comments he was making on mutual friends' posts. They were really creepy or pervy, commenting on the looks of the male and female friends of mine in really inappropriate ways. Me, having a case of hero complex, decided to confront the guy. I told him something to the extent of, quit saying weird shit to my friends. This is where things get really unsettling. After I confronted the person, they started messaging me very disturbing things. I don't remember exactly what all they said. The main message that stuck with me was, is I gave myself a lobotomy. To me, this was serial killer stuff. I blocked the guy, realizing that I didn't know who they were. They could be anyone. 
The way they spoke about where I lived and the people they commented on makes me think it could have been someone I knew with a burner account. Their name was Teddy Paul Rosenberg. The profile no longer exists. Google searches and people finder searches for the name don't turn up anything promising. I have wondered ever since, was it someone I knew? Do they know me? Is someone I interact with to this day secretly disturbed and perverted? Or was it just some random edgelord dude before edgelord was in the cultural zeitgeist? I still periodically look up the name, but I guess I'll never know who it really was. It could have been a just random creeper. Could have been somebody from outside of your circle of friends from your hometown. Could have been one of your friends having a little bit of fun. Who knows? What do you guys think? I was hanging with a new person who was heavily progressive, like she was the poster person for progressiveness. Fast forward two nights on our third date, and she's forcing herself on me in my apartment and telling me to just kiss her and touch her. I'm like, no, I'm not feeling it. And she's like, come on, just a little, just a little, come on. I'm like, holy hell, I never expected this from you. It was so vulgar and so incongruous. Hypoglycemia. To my doctor's bemusement, while at home, I started to feel funny like I might pass out. I thought I was drugged or something. There was a minute or two where I was conscious but completely incoherent and I vomited. Apparently my glucose levels just completely plummeted. They gave me something in the ambulance that quickly made me feel better. No one had any real explanation for why. Low blood sugar? 